long day. Glad I could read my book. Oh no, wait a minute. No! Oh, the power's out! Where's my flashlight? I did not prepare for this. Oh no. Not the flashlight battery too! Jack? Jack? You in here, buddy? Jack? Paul, so glad you're here. Is that you? Yeah. How you doing, man? We haven't seen you in three days at work. What's going on here? I have no power. I, I have no Wi-Fi. I have no internet. I have no TV. And I don't have an electric shaver, man. I can see that, yeah. You want a cracker? I, I'd love one, but but first, I think we should probably set you up with a generator. I've, I've got one with me from work. You want to give it a try? That's a great idea. I need some power in the house, like, now. Yeah, I, I can tell. Let's go. Come All on. Right. All right, let's go, man. So this is the generator. This is it. So this is a portable generator, and it's a great way to get some lights on in the immediate aftermath of a storm like we had. We're going to hook it up with extension cords here. That's going to let us plug in some table lamps, get your fridge going, some phone chargers. Paul says use a heavy-duty extension cord that's OK for outdoor use. If you want to plug multiple devices into one cord, use a splitter or surge protector. Make sure the extension cord can handle the total amps of the appliances and devices you plan on powering. Check that the entire cord is free of cuts and that the plug has all three prongs, critical to protect against the shock. First, connect the extension cord to the appliance you want to power. Then, run the cord outside to your generator through a window or door crack. Start the generator and finally connect the extension cord. Longer term, you really want to get an electrician out here to install what's called a transfer switch or interlock device. That's going to let you hook up this cable right here to the front of the machine, and you can power whole circuits. So you get things like overhead lights, central AC, things like that. Not that you need it right now. But you need to take care with a generator. We're obviously using this only outdoors. It should be a minimum of 20 feet from your house. And you should locate the exhaust port on the generator and make sure it's pointing away from the house. And why is that important? That's important because this actually produces carbon monoxide, just like a car. And for safety's sake, Paul says fuel for the generator should also be stored far enough away from your home. You want to make sure to store a lot of gasoline on hand. It can burn half a gallon, even a gallon an hour, depending on the capacity. So you want to make sure you keep it in, in safe containers like these and mix it with fuel stabilizer to keep the fuel from going bad. OK. All right, you ready to fire it up? Yes. Let's do it. Hey, Jack, I think your lights are back on. What? I said I think your lights are back on. What? Your lights are back on. Paul, the lights are back on. What? The lights are back on. All right, time to get back inside and warm up. Paul, oh, thank you so much for saving me. <laughs> You're very welcome. You're very welcome. So listen, how do I even begin to get a generator? Right, so you've got this one on loan for a little while longer, but the first question you really want to ask yourself is what you'd want to power if the power went out. Paul says there are three kinds of generators, and Consumer Reports tests all three types. The gas-powered portable generator, like the one Paul brought with him quieter and more efficient inverter generator which throttles up and down to match demand, and the more expensive stationary or whole house generator which starts automatically when the power goes out. These need to be installed by a professional. So glad you brought that generator. If not, I'd still be in the dark. Absolutely. So there is one more thing I brought to show you just in case something like this ever happens again. What is this? It's called a go bag. And basically, as you would probably guess from the name, it's everything you would want to grab if you ever had to go in a hurry, like a power outage or a natural disaster. So the first thing that you always want to pack is a blanket. Stay I think warm. I'll have that. Absolutely, especially if you get stranded on the side of the road. Next up, you want to make sure that you grab any prescription or daily medications uh, on your way out the door. You certainly want to have phone and device chargers with you. You want to grab a power strip like this one. If you end up in a hotel or with access to a single port on a generator, you can charge all your devices in a single shot. Next up, ID. So we've got some passports in here. These are actually expired. The idea here is that by using an expired passport, you've got a form of photo ID, but, but you don't have to be worried that you're going to be tempted to go in and grab it and forget to return it to the go bag. You can leave it in here permanently. OK. First aid kit. 
always a good idea. Always. So keep that on hand. I do have one more thing in here, What's and I that? bet you might be happy to see this. Razor. An electric razor! Just what I needed. 